Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. In this week's video we finally reached the last in our series on the massive retro haul that I purchased last year. And if you've been watching the channel you know that I've got two very large collections of PC parts, mostly video cards, and I've already gone through the ISA, PCI, AGP and Visa Local Bus cards on previous videos. So all that remains are the PCI Express cards. Uh, there's one card here which is not very interesting and I'm just going to leave that out because it's really only intended for a monitor on a server. Uh, but that leaves five very interesting cards which are either gaming or professional workstation cards. And I'm going to try these out on this machine here. Uh, no, not the Amstrad PC1512 in the corner but the big black machine. Now I haven't featured this on the channel before so let me show you inside the machine. It's a fairly modern machine compared to what we're used to seeing on the channel. It's a first generation Intel i7-870 at about 3 GHz. It's only got 8 GB of RAM installed, but I put Windows 10 on here. That'll hopefully save a bit of screwing around with drivers. Uh, we'll see. Of course, the risk is that by changing the graphics card numerous times, it'll eventually decide that this is a new computer, and then it will deregister my Windows for me. It'd be nice if that didn't happen, uh, but it doesn't really matter too much if it does. Now the motherboard in this is out of an old Packard Bell machine, so it's really nothing special. Uh, but I've installed a bunch of modern benchmarks on here, 3D Mark, Superposition, and a few others. Now I'll show you inside the machine. You can see that that Packard Bell motherboard is quite small. It's basically a supermarket style computer that it's come out of. Uh, the supply here is probably overkill at 650 watts. Uh, I've only got a pallet uh, NVIDIA 1050Ti in there and of course that'll come out so that we can put the other cards in. There's two 4GB Corsair modules in there. They say that they're 1600 MHz and uh, so there's a total of 8GB there. Uh, there's just the one fan and heatsink and then it vents out via a second fan to the exterior. So it's a very standard config. The hard drive is actually behind the black plate at the bottom and there's a mass of cables down there. I have pulled out one cable, uh, it's an extra PCIe connector in case we need to plug in power to any of our video cards. Uh, but other than that, a very standard configuration, uh, but it should do for today's testing. It's time to look at the various cards and see what their features are. So I did try this ICT50 uh, in both the 16X and the 4X slot in my machine and it's perfectly useless, it doesn't even boot. And I think it's just a header uh, for a graphics card or a graphics core that would be in the actual server. Uh, so we can put that aside. Uh, the first interesting card is this ATI card. And I should say that all of these are 16 times uh, PCIe. Uh, so this is the only ATI card in the lot. It's a Radeon HD 2400 XT. So this is a 256 megabyte card. And actually all of the cards are 2007, uh, with the exception of this one, which is 2006. Uh, so this has uh, 650 MHz on the core and 500 on the memory, uh, or an effective speed of 1000 MHz on the memory. Uh, it's only a 64-bit bus, which surprised me, and it's GDDR3 RAM. Now this has 40 shading units, uh, but you have to be a little bit careful here because Shading units and vector shaders got merged, as far as I can tell, into unified shaders. Uh, so this is talking about the number of unified shaders. Uh, so it has four uh, TMUs, four ROPs, and uh, two what ATI call compute units. Uh, so it's really confusing when you look at GPUs uh, to decide what is a core. Uh, so technically a core is a very, very small component and these cards can have very, very large numbers of cores, but that does not equate in any way to a core in a CPU. Uh, perhaps a compute unit is a better measure of uh, the cores, uh, in inverted commas, uh, that a GPU has, but you can really only compare compute units uh, across uh, you know, one particular range of GPU. It's not really useful to compare it against ones in different eras or uh, from different brands. Now compute units is exactly the same thing as NVIDIA calls SMs uh, or streaming multiprocessors. So for all the other cards uh, that have compute units, 
uh, there'll be SM. So basically what happened at some point uh, NVIDIA started to put CUDA cores into GPUs and uh, allow people to do uh, general purpose computing on GPUs. And once that started, uh, you know, GPUs started being segmented up into compute units. So there are even, you know, texture mapping units and so on inside a compute unit. So they're, they're complicated, uh, you know, devices. Uh, so we won't go into all of the technicalities of that at the moment. Just bear in mind that compute unit probably means nothing much at all unless you're comparing it to a very similar card. Uh, so the next card here is a Club 3D card. Uh, it's a CGNX GS846LCI, so a very long name, uh, but it's just basically an NVIDIA 8400GS. Uh, so it has 459 megahertz on the GPU. The shade is run at twice that, and it has 400 megahertz memory uh, with an effective speed of 800 on the memory. Uh, it's again another 64-bit card, uh, but this is only DDR2. Uh, so there are actually multiple revisions of the GS, and this seems to be the earliest one. Uh, so it's a 256 megabyte card. Uh, so this has 16 cores, uh, it has 8 TMUs, 4 ROPs, and uh, 2 SMs, or the equivalent of the ATI compute units. So the next one here is uh, a 7600 GT, and unfortunately I haven't been able to determine the brand of this card. Uh, I do have a fan that will fit this. I found another car that has a similar fan. Uh, so that's 400 on the core and on the memory speed, and uh, it's a 128-bit card. There's a little bit of a discrepancy here. The card says it's DDR2, but uh, Wikipedia says that for this GPU, uh, it was GDDR3. Uh, so I assume that this is a cut-down budget version of something or other. So this has 12 shading units, it has 5 vector uh, shaders, so the shaders are split here, they're not unified. And uh, there are 12 TMUs and 8 ROPs. And it's before the era of compute units. Uh, this one here is an ASUS card, so it's an EN8600 GT. Uh, so this was uh, NVIDIA's Tesla architecture, which is really where the, uh, the SMs, the symmetric multiprocessors, started to appearing cards and uh, this has 540 uh, on the GPU speed and twice that for the shaders uh, 700 on the memory and 1400 uh, effective on the memory it's also a 128 bit card and the other big difference about this one is a 512 meg card so I, I really expect this one to be the fastest card in the lot uh, although it will be an interesting comparison with the Radeon uh, so this only has 32 shaders, uh, has 16 TMUs though, uh, 8 ROPs, and it says that it has 4 SMs, or symmetric multiprocessors. Uh, so the final card here is an NVGF 7600GS, and uh, the GPU speed and memory are both 400 with a, an effective memory speed of 800, and it's a 128-bit bus, but it's only, G, uh, it's only DDR2 memory. Uh, so this has 12 shaders, 5 vertex shaders, so again not unified, 12 TMUs and 8 ROPs. So I think these are the only two that weren't broken down into uh, SMs or CUs, compute units. Anyway, let's put the cards in and do some benchmarking and see how they actually perform. Well, I've actually run into two very early problems. So this card here with the fan that's missing, uh, I was able to get the fan to screw into that, no problems. Uh, but unfortunately this card does not boot at all. You can see that the connector is quite rusty, but this seems to be nothing to do with it. Uh, even if I take the connector out of there, uh, this just doesn't boot. It just beeps at me. So I think that's why the fan is missing. Uh, it's probably a faulty card. Interestingly enough, I can't actually see anything faulty uh, on either side of the board or anything missing. Uh, the only thing that's actually visibly wrong is the little white plastic surround on the fan connector is missing but this is not critical. Uh, the other problem is with this card here so if you have a look at the connector here uh, there's a really a large number of pins in the connector and it looks for all the world uh, like the uh, pin configuration on here but notice the, uh, the dash at the end there which stops you plugging it into a card of this kind. 
Now, unfortunately, I don't have a monitor that will plug into this or any kind of adapter that would allow me to plug it in. Uh, so this card uh, really just has to remain untested, uh, unfortunately. So we have to exclude that. And believe it or not, we're just down to three cards now. Uh, so anyway, I hope that I can get these going and will at least get some results. Uh, these are the most interesting cards out of the lot anyway. I must admit I wouldn't have minded to see that ATI one go since it's the only ATI one in the bunch. But you can't help bad luck, uh, so let's get stuck into these. This is the Club 3D card, the 8400GS, and you can see it's a bit of a slideshow. Uh, I did actually try the 3D Mark series of benchmarks, but the only one out of those that would actually even start to run was the Cloudgate one. Uh, but unfortunately it just didn't do anything once it started up. Uh, I tried updating it, but unfortunately the updater also doesn't tend to work. Uh, so then I switched over to the Unigen benchmarks, and the first one I tried was the Superposition one. Uh, but this just says that the card doesn't have the necessary features uh, that are required to run it. Uh, so I've gone back one here to the Valley benchmark, and as you can see it's only getting about one frame per second, which is going to be too slow for us to compare these cards. So I'm going to have to go back quite a while in the Unigen series, I think, uh, to find something that's actually suitable for this card. This is the Unigen Sanctuary benchmark. Uh, it's running at 1920 by 1080 here, and obviously still too slow. I'm going to have to drop the resolution way down, uh, because this is the oldest Unigen benchmark that I actually have. Uh, I'm not really sure what the years of these were. Um, it just says copyright 2005 to 2010. Uh, so they might just be too late uh, for these cards. Anyway, let's try it with a lower resolution and see if we can get some of this. Well, here it is at 800 by 600, which is really quite low. Uh, and it does have 9 FPS here, so I'm going to call that OK. Uh, of course, it would be great if it was about six times that. Uh, but this gives us a baseline, at least, to compare the other cards. So we'll do all of them at 800, 600 and see how they go. Now I checked and the Unigen Sanctuary benchmark is actually 2007, so the same year as all our cards. Uh, but when I took this card out I noticed that it's extremely hot to touch. Uh, it's only air-cooled, uh, it's actually a silent version of the card. And uh, I really am not sold on this at all. Uh, it's clearly getting way too hot and I'm wondering whether that could be related to the very poor performance. Uh, anyway, I'll try the other cards and see if we get a similar sort of thing. They are all air-cooled cards. Well, I've actually had problems with this 7600GS as well. Uh, there's no picture coming out of this. I've tried reseeding the card. I've tried both of the outputs here and no dice. So it looks like that one's going into the rubbish heap with the other card that didn't work. Uh, so that only leaves one other card that we can try, and that is the Asus one here. Let's hope that we have some better luck with that one. Windows 10 was taking a little bit too long to install drivers for this graphics card, so I went into Device Manager, and sure enough there are other devices listed, uh, including VGA cards, so I clicked uh, Update Driver for that, and it went out onto the web and looked for a driver that was suitable and installed it. Uh, I should mention that earlier today, Windows 10 took many hours to install all the security updates and the latest version of Windows 10, uh, on this machine. Uh, it really is a slow process and I'm not actually sure that I made the right decision using Windows 10 for this. Uh, it's really not ideal and not uh, that suitable for retro computing in my opinion. Well look at that, the frame rate on this is up in the high 40s. Uh, it starts off around the 30s and then it just goes up. Uh, so this is absolutely wiping the floor with that other card. So this is only an 8600 GT and the other one was an 8400GS, uh, but what a difference. Uh, it still gets very, very hot. Uh, it's way too hot for my liking. You'd need very, very good cooling in the machine itself, I think. Uh, so I'm really not sold on these silent cards at all. Uh, but uh, obviously uh, this is okay for the era. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that the frame rate isn't up around you know, 60 or something like that, especially given that we're only running this at 800, 600. Uh, but I guess that's just what was available at the time, unless you bought uh, really high-end graphics cards. 
So anyway, that uh, really goes to show you that you can get some decent stuff in Lucky Dips and you can get some real rubbish. Uh, but that brings our series to the end. Uh, we've gone all the way through from very early Isaac cards all the way through to uh, 2007 with these PCIe cards. And it's been a very, very fun journey. Uh, certainly I'm delighted that I broke the record on my Pentium 3 rig. Uh, but that's the end of the series, and that's all I have for this week. We'll return to more usual retro fare in the coming weeks. And if you want to stick around for that, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.